Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Truly, he is great. His mercy endures forever. There is no God like our God who reigns, who rules, who has dominion and authority, who forever liveth and abideth to make intercession for us, he is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He's the rock upon which we stand. He's the bread of life. And as we engage in our lesson tonight, I want to wish everybody thank, uh, happy Thanksgiving because we're approaching this season. You know, Thanksgiving in a few days, or a couple of days. And I just pray you all have a safe and a blessed holiday full of the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Let's get some of this music here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to God in the highest. We magnify him for truly he is great. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Almighty. Almighty. Bless him. Bless him. Come on and praise the Lord tonight. Stuff straight here. I can turn this volume down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm excited what God is doing in this season. He's opening up our, our hearts to receive the engrafted word that's able to save our souls. He's releasing the promises in our lives to empower us, to strengthen us, to encourage us to keep moving forward in our purpose and our destiny. Because without God in our lives, we can do nothing. But with God, all things are possible to us who believe. I thank the Lord for what he's doing because sometimes God, you know, he wakes us up early in the morning just to speak to us. But if you're one who don't mind getting up in the morning, when God begins to stir up your heart, he'll wake you up sometimes at 2 o'clock in the morning and you, you can't go back to sleep because God is trying to get your attention. But many times we miss it because we're in our flesh. The flesh don't want to obey the Spirit of God. It doesn't want us to get up to pray and seek God's face early in the morning. David said, I will seek thee early in the morning when I arise. You know, it's so important to get into a place of submission where we yield ourselves to the spirit of the living God and allow him to minister to our hearts. And I guarantee God will give you a rhema word at two o'clock in the morning because it's something he's trying to convey to you to bring a change in your life or even perfect the thing that concerns you. Or he's about to bring a shift in your life. And sometimes we get in a hurry. We miss the shift when God is commanding us to move into a new purpose. 
another avenue of faith to grow in our purpose because we get carnal, we get lazy, we get, we get resistful, stubborn. We don't want to move when God say move. And one thing I found out is so important to obey the voice of the Lord when God begins to speak. He will give you a word that will shape your destiny. A word that will empower you to walk into that destiny he has for your life. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for change. I'm ready for change. I'm, I'm tired of the same old cycle sometime in my own life. And God keeps bringing me to a deep dimension in his word to show me that there's something greater that he has for us if we just learn how to listen and obey his voice. So let's go into prayer this evening. Gracious God, our Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you for your presence in our midst. We thank you for another opportunity, oh God, to share your word. I thank you, Lord God, that you're able to release your anointing this evening, God, to heal, deliver, to strengthen, to encourage, to empower the people of God, those who may be going through some problems, some struggles, some habits, some addictions, those who are going through a broken heart, a time of mourning, they're grieving, God, because someone has lost a loved one. We know, God, that you are a compassionate God. You love us unconditionally. And even in the times when we hurt, you hurt for us, God, because you care about us. You said you, we have a Savior, a high priest, who can, who can succor our suffering. In other words, he's acquainted with our sufferings. And he knows all about it very well, God. And he will help us get through the toughest times in our lives when we learn how to depend on him. Lord, tonight, I'm asking you, oh God, to minister to our hearts, oh God, to stir us up on the inside, that we do it as your word tells in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal the land. We're praying that there will be healing in our land, oh God. As we come together to learn your word, oh God, about the strongholds in our lives, oh God, that we be more fruitful and more freer people to serve you with a new mind, new heart, new spirit that's been purified, washed in the blood of the Lamb, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, that we walk in holiness, righteousness, and truth, oh God, as we learn how to submit ourselves to your authority, your lordship, and your rulership, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you. In Jesus' name, let your word, Father God, minister to our hearts tonight to help us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of who you are. Release the fire of your spirit that will consume the dross of sin in our lives, O oh God, to perfect the thing that concerns us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm going to start out tonight with a devotional, and it's uh, from the book, More of You, God. Today's devotion, it says, today, Lord Jesus, let me turn this music off because it's going to disturb me and cause me to lose my focus, and I can't have that happen right now. So, today's devotional, it says, today, Lord Jesus, I'm so grateful and thankful for your gift to face fear. I'm so glad I'm not afraid of my fear. They want to try to stop me and overtake me. But Lord, you give me strength to comfort it, to confront it, rebuke it, and demand it to leave. This is a time where I stand on your word, knowing you have my front, my back, and my sides. Hallelujah. You say I should not have fear of any the other than you alone, O oh God. I gain so much strength, confidence, and courage from every incident where I encounter fear. I face it dead on. 
Lord, you give me the ability to say, I am not afraid. Hallelujah. I can conquer all things through Christ who lives inside of me. There is not a weapon forming against me, prospering. Yes, Lord, if you did it before, you can and will do it again. I have the victory through my Father in heaven. My faith gets stronger. My fear decreases as I get wrapped up in more of you, God. That is so awesome. That, that is powerful. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor Nate. That is so powerful that we can face our fears. We can confront it. We can command, we can command our fears to leave us alone because we're standing and trusting in God's word, his protection, his protection, his covering, his presence is a shield round about us. Why? Because the only one we need to fear is God. And that fear is not the fear of being afraid of God to come near God, but it's a reverential fear where we can trust in God's ability, his covering to keep us secure in his presence. That is so awesome. That is so awesome to know that God is on our side. If he's on our side, he's more than the world against us. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Let's see here. Go to my lesson tonight. Last week, we started a lesson on the spirit of whoredom. And tonight, we're going to continue in this subject. We're going to talk about uh, gluttony. That's another subject. It's another attribute or characteristic of the spirit of whoredom is, is, is uh, gluttony, you know. And one thing about the enemy, he knows if I can get you to a place where you can just, just devour, just eat, 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 you won't spend time in God's presence because you'd be too tired, too sluggish to get in his presence. And one thing about God, God knows what, what we love the most. He knows what captivates our attention. But we have to be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to get our attention, to come back to the place when we know when enough is enough. Sometimes we can overindulge in eating. We can overindulge in television. We can overindulge in, in music. We can overindulge in working on the computer systems because we get so distracted by the things of the world which causes and produces gluttony. And one thing about God's word, and it says in, sec, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, I have the right to do anything, you say, but everything, is, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. That's the NIV version. I believe that's what it is. And, and so, you know, one thing Paul was making it clear that we have the right to do what we want to do, no matter what it is to satisfy our flesh. But there's a there's a, a, a moderate moderation. There's a limit we must have when it comes to the things that appeases this flesh. It's so important to recognize that the word of God, it takes precedence in our lives when we learn how to submit to the authority and the lordship of God and allow his spirit to minister to us, God will begin to purge that desire. He'll control, give you control, self-control, which is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And if you have no self-control, then you're out of control. And God doesn't want us to be out of control. He wants to be in control, submitted to his authority, his lordship on a daily basis. And what it means, we need to, if we're going to overindulge in anything, overindulge in the word of God. Get in the word of God. And I say this all the time because it's so true and it's so vital. If when you get in the word of God, the word of God gets inside of you, the word of God begins to manifest in your life and bring out the best in you, which is the, the ability and the creativity of God. God's nature, his DNA is inside of you. And God begins to bring that out as you learn how to overindulge in his word. Get in the word of God. Because your life source stems from the word of God. Your life source stems from the word of God. When you get in the word of God, God's word will begin to reshape and restructure your mindset 
to where you become conducive to the mind of Christ. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. As we started talking about the spirit of, whor the spirit of whoredom, whoredom is a word for prostitution. I was reminded of Hosea chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. It says, Then the Lord said unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, and yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel, who looks to other gods and love flagons of wine. Then he says, So I brought her to me, for 50 pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. And I said to her, thou shalt abide for me many days and thou shalt not play the harlot and thou shalt not be for another man. So I will also be for thee. God commanded the prophet Hosea. He said, children of Israel have wandered away into harlotry. They had become a prostitute because they began to mingle with other gods to where their identity begins to commit adultery against God. So what they did, they began to indulge in the customs of idol worship, which God is a jealous God. He said, thou shalt have no other God besides me. God commanded in Exodus 20. He talks about when he gave the commands to Moses to tell the children of Israel, Ten Commandments. One of those commands was thou shalt have no other God before me. Why? Because I am a jealous God. And because they committed adultery, you know, with other idols, God bless you. God bless you, sis. Because they committed adultery with other, 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 God, other gods, God says, Hosea, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go find this harlot, Gomer, begin to marry her. If you read the story in Hosea, you'll find out God commanded him to go marry her because he had a, a plan to redeem Israel back to himself. Because they wandered away into the iniquities of the other customs, God says the only way I'm going to redeem them back is to demonstrate it through Hosea the prophet to go and bring them in connection of relationship with a harlot. That's terrible. But some things doesn't make sense when God does it. And all we have to do is accept it, walk in it, trust in God's plan, trust in his heart, and not seek his hand. Many people want God's hand, but they don't want God's plan. You hear what I just said? Many people want God's hand, but they don't want God's plan. Because God's plan would mess up your plan. God's plan would mess up your routine. God's plan would mess up your agenda. God's plan would change your order when you submit to his plan. And so God said, Hosea, here's what I'm going to do. He said, go buy her for 50 pieces of silver. What did it remind you of? Judas betrayed Jesus for 50 pieces of silver. Or was it 30 pieces? 30 pieces of silver, I believe it was. But anyway, God says, go buy her and, and take her for yourself as your wife. But if you read the story, she still wandered off back into other, other people to commit prostitution and adultery. Because that was her nature. Because she had been in this thing for so long, the only way God can break the rudiments of sin out of our lives is when we recognize that I can't do this thing by myself. As we just talked about, we're going to talk about tonight the spirit of gluttony, which is a part of the attributes or the, the nature of whoredoms. Whoredoms has many different, uh, 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 in many different connections. Whoredom has many different attributes. And if you don't recognize those attributes, you'll find yourself falling into the trap, the pitfall of despair because of this wicked spirit. So we talked about unfaithfulness and adultery. Then it has another subject, chronic dissatisfaction. Another subject, the love of money. Another subject is idolatry. The other subject is fornication. Another subject is spirit, soul, or body prostitution. And there are scriptures to back these up, what we're going to discuss. Then excessive appetites, worldly, worldliness, which are roots of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. 
Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. All these different things are of the customs or the nature of whoredom. When you submit to the spirit of prostitution, people think prostitution means just going out on the street corners and selling your body and, you know, sleeping with whoever you, Tom, Dick, and Harry. You just do whatever you want to do to get, get your flesh satisfied, to earn some money. But you have not just the prostitution of the outward man, but the spiritual man of prostitution. This strong man's name seems to imply that only people who frequently prostitute are influenced by the spirit of hoarder. But there is more to it than that. This particular condition can be spiritual bondage as well as a physical bondage. We have to recognize the spiritual bondage that has caught us up in the, in the, into the entrapment of the enemy to cause us to fall away from God's plan. But one thing about God, we can't take God by surprise. You can't take God uh, uh, by, by tricking him up or deceiving him. Everything that the enemy does, he takes what God has called righteous and perverts it in your life to make it look like God when all the time it's you doing what you want to do. So it says, they will not frame their doings to turn unto their God for the spirit of foreordom the spirit of whoredom is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. Hosea chapter 5, verse 4. And because of the desire to keep turning to these, this, the spirit of whoredom or other gods, God says their hearts are so framed. You've been doing wrong for so long to where right doesn't even fit in the equation no more. So when God is trying to perfect you, God is trying to change you, God is trying to draw you in, your flesh keep opposing God. So the enemy has got a grip on you, on your mentality to keep you in bondage. So God says they have turned to the spirit of whoredom and have not known the Lord. That is a sad condition to be in where you don't even know the Lord anymore. Hosea's marriage to the harlot illustrates the nation, illustrated the nations what they were doing when they forsook God to embrace the idols and the false gods of their neighboring nations. Accordingly, Hosea felt the same pain and agony on a physical level with his harlot wife that God experiences when his people are unfaithful to him in their pursuit of other gods. Many people offer sacrifices to physical idols. If you study the Hinduism religion, they have over 200 gods that they sacrifice, that they worship. We all have idols in our lives. If we don't control it, it controls us. Why? Because it influenced you to turn from your creator, to turn from the Lord himself. And that's what the enemy does. He wants to deceive you and manipulate you into thinking what you're doing is right when all the time it's wrong. Television can be your idol. I mentioned that earlier. A car, automobile can be your idol. Whatever it is that takes precedence in your life that controls you can be your idol. And God says we have to recognize the spirit behind the spirit. You hear what I said? We must recognize the spirit behind the spirit. Just like a person who's a drunkard. That's an idol. Alcohol became their idol. Why? Because I got to have the alcohol. So when I wake up in the morning, I got to have the alcohol. I remember growing up, my father was, was, was a heavy drinker. He drank a lot. He used to always get drunk and all these different things. And, and you know, but yet he worked. He was, he was a productive father who made sure his family was taken care of. But yet he had an issue with drinking until God drew his attention and he turned his life over to the Lord. His father was a pastor. His brother was a pastor. And my father became a pastor later on in life. Not only that, when I began to get into my uh, teenage years, I started drinking at 15 because of different issues I was dealing with in my own personal life. I turned to drinking. I turned to sleeping around. I turned to doing whatever, whatever I wanted to do to try to make the pain go away. And God began to show me that the things I was doing were the bondage years later. 
So I drank so much to where I had to have gin and coffee in the morning before I went to work. That's how addicted I was to alcohol. And I drank all that. I would come to church uh, uh, jilted with alcohol. But people never knew it because I knew how to carry myself in a professional manner, even though I was under the influence. And I thank the Lord that years later, when God surrounded me by apostles, bishops, pastors, evangelists, and teachers, it helped restructure my life in the way God ordained for it to be to where I am today, assistant pastor of a church. God has a plan that we can't understand sometimes, but yet God knows what he has for you to do down the road. We don't see it because we're entrapped in our own mentality. We're stuck in our own bondage, and the enemy wants you to, don't want you to see what God sees because he knows once you get the revelation, you're going to change. When you get a revelation, everything about you begins to shift. And the enemy knows that in the shifting, there's some things got to fall off. In the shifting, there's some problems and some habits and addictions have to be stripped away from you. What dominates you? Paul made this observation. He says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I would not be brought under the power of any. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. Why? Because if you allow the things of the world to get, get a hold of you, it will begin to control your entire destiny. Television, sports, food, video games, etc. are not evil in themselves. They only become a problem to us when they dominate our lives. Whatever it is you entertain the most that has total control of your life, it's a problem. It's an addiction. It's a bondage. It's a stronghold. And it will keep you in an prison in your heart and in your mind. The reason why so many people deal with mental psychosis and, you know, all these different problems in their mind is because we're not giving in to the Lord. When we recognize the spirit that's causing me to have this issue in my mentality, God has a solution. It's called the word of God. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will come inside of you. He'll begin to heal the broken hearted. He began to regulate your mindset, begin to change the things that got you imprisoned in your mentality to set you free, to bind the broken heart and heal their wound. God knows exactly what to do. The word says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, it says, Love not the world, neither things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father. You hear what I said? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. In other words, God says, this will pass away one day. Even the lust of the things that we desire with our flesh is going to pass away. God, I said this last week, God do not want us to be spiritual alley cats, chasing whatever pleasure happens to be the latest fast in the world. He wants us to have our antennas tuned into his frequency. When we hear his voice, we turn from adultery, we turn from fornication, we turn from the desires of the flesh that we know is not pleasing to God. He said, your body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. Know ye not that our bodies are the members of Christ. We must recognize we have to live by faith. Because the just shall live by faith. And the only way we're going to overcome anything the enemy brings into our lives is by surrendering, yielding, and releasing ourselves into the hands of God. Every addiction, every stronghold, every lie the devil has been speaking into your ears through yourself or through other people or through other avenues, we must recognize these things and submit to the Lord our God and allow him 
to come inside of us to purge us with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire purifies. Not only does it fear, purify, but fire destroys. God used fire in many different methods. He used a pillar of fire to protect the children of Israel from the Egyptians. He used a fire in a burning bush to get Moses' attention. He used a fire of the Holy Ghost to consume the works of sin in our lives when we submit to his authority. We brought nothing to this world and it's certain we carry nothing out. Not only that, but the spirit of gluttony. Gluttony is one sin we very hear little preaching about or teaching on these days, probably because we are so busy practicing it. We personally notice it more than the average person because we are not, it says we personally notice, notice it more than the average person because we are constantly being exposed to the poverty in the third world countries where, where we hold our crusades. While most of the world is searching for the next meal, we in the U.S. are trying to diet off the excess poundage we have been drooping all over our bodies. Sadly, our temple of the Holy Spirit is many times composed mostly of lard. In other words, fats. We consume so much foods in our bodies that's not good for us. The reason why we have so many health issues. And because we do this, we, we allow all this stuff to attach itself to our organs and cause inflictions on the inside of our organs where our body becomes sick, we become overweight, and we carry excessive garbage in our system. But I thank God for wisdom because the Lord would give you natural things of this world to purge those things out of your system, to lose that weight, to get yourself back in order, to build your, your immune system up, to get your health back in line with the word. God doesn't want us to be sickly people. He wants us to be people who are productive, people whose lives exemplify Christ. So every day when we wake up in the morning, we feel good about ourselves. We feel strengthened, revived, revitalized because we got a good night rest and because we know we're not consuming a bunch of garbage. So our bodies are like thanking us when we wake up in the morning, like, hallelujah, I thank you for putting in me the good substances that's causing my body to heal itself. When you consume a lot of fatty acids and a lot of garbage, your body has a problem fighting off infections. It has a problem rebuilding the immune system. It has a problem healing itself. God designed us to heal ourselves with the things he produced in this earth. There are so many this herbs, different minerals, vitamins, all types of supplements, things that are beneficial to our bodies. But a lot of times we don't want to take it because I'm so used to eating a bunch of stuff I want to eat and overeat this stuff till my body is satisfied, which is bondage. And the more you stay in bondage, the more your body is going to continue to, to pay off and tell you how much you've been out of order. I know when I used to consume a lot of sugars, I was always hyper. And not only that, but I was sickly. And, and when God began to give me a revelation, change your diet, even my doctor said the same thing. Don't consume a lot of sugars. Don't eat mayonnaise. I mean, certain things the doctor told me to stay away from because it's fatty acids. And that's, a lot of that stuff is not good because it would produce illnesses in your body. So as I begin to listen to the Holy Spirit, I change my diet. I, I love sweets, but I have a moderation to sweets now. I might eat a candy bar today and won't have another for like three months. Because I, I love candy bars. I love the, the Three Musketeers. I love the Snicker bars. I love the Twix. But the thing is, I know when to stop what I'm eating, what I'm eating. Because of the discipline that God has instructed me by the Holy Spirit to keep myself on the track of a healthy kick. Because I don't want to live a sickly life in my adult years as I'm getting older. So we must recognize, it says, sadly, our temples of the Holy Spirit is many times composed mostly of lard. 
This does not mean we should become obsessed with dieting, but discipline has to extend over into our eating habits too. Just because the mountain of chocolate is there doesn't mean we have to eat it all. So I love the Dove chocolate, dark chocolate candies. I buy those little bitty, uh, nip, many, many uh, 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 chocolate pieces, and I love those. But I bought the, a bag of them things probably like six months ago and still have it. I've been eating it a little at a time because I'm not a person that's going to continue to fill my body with a bunch of junk till I'm sluggish and don't want to spend time in God's word, don't want to pray, don't want to seek God's face. And as I begin to hear God's voice, and he speaks to me all the time about whatever I'm doing is not of God to stop it. And when you hear the spirit convicting you, don't turn your ear from hearing him. Don't turn your ear because God speaks to us by divine revelation to give us instruction to make our lives productive and better. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now I tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is their shame, whose mind earthly things. Philippians chapter 3, verse 18 through 19. Paul told the church at Philippi. Paul told the church at Philippi. He said, many of you walk. I told you how to live. He said, now you're weeping because your lives are out of order. You're enemies of the cross. Then he says, your destruction is the end. The end, whose end is destruction. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to the man, but the end thereof is destruction or death. Then he says, your God become your belly. That means you're just going to eat, 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 eat. Consume, 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 whether it's good or bad. You're going to just keep on eating till you become excessive in your eating. Whose mind earthly things. So your mind becomes consumed with the earthly things to when God trying to speak spiritual things to you, there's no discernment anymore because you didn't cut off the ears of God from hearing God. You turned your ears off. Don't want to hear God's voice when God is bringing conviction to tell you, hey, stop eating too much of the television. Stop eating too much of, of the restaurant's food. Stop eating too much of, 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 of whatever it is you're consuming. You know, so like computers and television and, and uh, uh, telephones and all this stuff is so many different things that gra grabs our attention and, we, and it captivates us and it lures us into a trap where we overindulge in what we're doing. And God is saying, stop it. He says, your end is destruction. Your belly is full of garbage. That's your God. And God says, don't have any other gods before me. Why? Because when God says, I'm a jealous God, God is letting you know that anytime you violate his covenant and you overindulge, you're setting yourself up for a downfall. But I thank God for Jesus. He has a remedy. It's called the blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb will cleanse you. The blood of the lamb will sanctify you. The blood of the lamb will purify you. The blood of the lamb will will take out the mess out of your life, the blood of a lamb will empower you. As he cleanses you, he empowers you to keep moving forward in the promises that God has for your life, that the spirit of gluttony will be stripped off of you. If you eat too much sugar, it clouds your thinking. You can't think straight. So when God is trying to give you a revelation, you can't think straight enough to receive it because your mind has been clouded with garbage. You got people who are bound in, in pornography, people who are bound in homosexuality, people are bound in lesbianism. You have a lot of stuff where people are bound to gossiping and backbiting. That's gluttony. We glutton in so many different things that we come overindulge in this stuff to strip you of your purpose. But God wants you to know tonight, my brother, my sister, that he has the remedy. 
All you got to do is recognize that there is an unclean spirit that attaches itself to your, your spirit, attaches itself to your heart. Recognize that spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart to strip that thing out of you. He will pull it up from the root because until you pull the thing up from the root, it's going to always leave the residue or whatever it is that was inside of you. The enemy knows whatever he planted in your heart that's not of God. If you don't pluck it by the root, just like when you go and mow your lawn and you see those dandelions popping up and you begin to mow your lawn and, and, and cut it away, right? So you cut away the, the dandelions. You cut away the weeds. What happens? They magnify. They multiply. Why? Because you done spread even more when you cut it. You gave it more ground and more leverage to produce more of its kind. God says in the garden, when he set the man in the garden of Eden, he said every tree produces after its own kind. So whatever it is you're gluttoning on, if you don't cut it up from the root, you just leave the residue of that thing. It's going to produce even more desire in your heart to pull you away from God. So when it pulls you away, then you find it a trouble. You find it a problem of trying to be free. So there's no remedy in your own methods or your own efforts to get free until you turn to God. When you turn to God, the Holy Spirit himself will begin to take you to the word of God. And the word of God will begin to show you who you are and how to overcome this thing. Because it's the word of God that has the solution to all of our problems. The word of God has the cleansing agent to come inside of you to purify you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 7 says, Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink, and they got up to indulge in reveries. Paul told the church of Corinthians, Do not be like the world. Don't become an idolater. He said the people sat down to eat, and to drink. Why? They were gluttony. They were overindulging in the things that the world offered to them. We don't have to accept the dainties of the world. We don't have to accept the things the world offers. Just like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the book of Daniel, they resisted the king's delicacies, and they proved to the king that we can survive on what God produces, the vegetation, and not the things from the king's table. We have to know when to say no to the enemy's voice. We have to know when to say no to the enemy's enticements. We have to know when to say no to the enemy's entrapments. We know that the enemy's is his entrapments because God reveals it to us. God will show you. God bless you, sister. God will show you when the enemy is about to entrap you. But we don't pay attention. There are so many different warning signs. The Holy Spirit would give you to let you know the enemy is about to lure you down into a trap. He'll send a person that come to you that's gossiping. He'll send a person that come to you with a lustful spirit. He'll send a, a person to come to you that's full of indulgence of sin. And say, come on, let's go to the club. Let's go have a drink. Knowing that God delivered you from drinking and that's your weakness is drinking. The enemy will come and say, hey, we're just going to have a few drinks. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything. You just come along with us. Just, just, just join us at this club or join us at this bar because we're going to go just have a few drinks because we, we you know, want to have a good time. That one drink turns to many drinks. The many drinks turns to indulgence. Before you know it, you're drunk. You're out of character. Now you're out of order. And then the next morning, you wake up feeling miserable with a hangover. Why? Because I gave in to the entrapment of the enemy. Here's another thing. Fornication. We can go give in to the spirit of fornication. 
And the enemy says, okay, you know, a little bit ain't going to hurt you. God God knows your heart. He knows the weaknesses of man. He said the weakness of God is greater than the weakness of man anyway. So if God knows you're weak, God knows how to forgive you. God knows how to clean you up. God knows how to put you back in right standing with himself. But because you do it one time, you want to do it again, then again, and again. Now you're overindulging in fornication. The same with adultery. We do spiritual fornication because we fornicate in our mind. Jesus puts it this way. He says, if a man looks upon a woman to lust after her, he has committed adultery in his heart. We can overindulge in so much stuff in our hearts and never do it in our flesh. Never act upon it. But because you thought it and you didn't cast that thought down, the enemy brings it to you to the place where he begins to magnify it in your thought life. So now you're going into to pornography. You're looking for other avenues to fulfill this desire in your mind. Then you see women, you're lusting after them. You see men, you're lusting after them. Why? Because it was a seed planted in your mind. That seed can come from somebody that you're connected with. I remember my pastor told us years, a few years ago that when you come to the altar and we touch somebody's hand, if he doesn't tell you to touch people's hands or hold their hands, don't do it. Because if you hold a person's hand, whatever spirit is in them will jump on you. And you find yourself having thoughts you didn't have before. You find yourself having suicidal thoughts. You have yourself, find yourself being miserable. You find yourself worrying. You find yourself being into a place of entrapment of thoughts you never thought you had before. Why? Because of the spirits transferred from one person to the next person. We have to recognize the spirit of gluttony. Spirit of gluttony does not mean just overindulging in food. It's whatever you allow to have overindulged in your life to the overflow of it. You allow yourself to be entrapped by the enemy. And the enemy knows that I can keep you blinded from the truth of God's word. I can keep you in a place of rebellion. Deuteronomy chapter 20, 21, verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 20. They shall say to the elders, this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. This is the elders of the children of Israel talking to the, to the priest. And he said, they say to the elders, this is the son, it's the son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. We got a lot of stubborn and rebellious folk in the house of God. They would not obey the truth, even if their life depended on it. Been going to church for so many years and still do not follow the truth. You go to church out of routine, not for relationship with God. You go to church out of, out of custom because your mama went to church, your daddy went to church, your, your family and before them went to church, your grandparents went to church. So I go to church out of routine just to say I went to church, but I'm not going to get anything from God. We have to be careful of the little subtle ways the enemy will creep into your life to entrap you into a place of bondage. He will cause you to be stubborn, cause you to be resistful, stiff neck rebellious haters of God. Why? Because of his entrapment. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. Said, now this was the sin of the sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and the needy. That's a shame. This is another spirit. Of, of the gluttony. It makes you selfish. When you know somebody needs some food, you need somebody, know somebody needs some financial help, you know somebody needs need your resources to help them get along in life, and you have more than enough to help them, and you refuse to help them, God said, how can you love me and don't love your brother who you see daily? We have to recognize the needs of God's people because what you do to the least of them, God says, you have done it unto me. We have to be in a place of submission, yielded, surrendered, 
releasing ourselves into the hand of God to be obedient to his word. And in the process, God's word will empower you. God's word will help perfect you. It will help change you to be the vessel of honor and not dishonor. To be a vessel that's righteous and pleasing in the eyes of God. One more scripture, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. It says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it and he ate it. Isn't that something? How all it takes is one person to lead you into an entrapment of rebellion against God. It took Adam's wife to lure him to the place of losing his authority, his rightful position. They already had all the wisdom God has instructed and given to them. Why? Because they were created in God's image and likeness. So everything they needed, they already had it deposited within them. And today we do the exact same thing. Everything God has promised pertaining to life and godliness, he already deposited inside of you. But you got to know how to tap into the kingdom of God to release it into your life. But because of sin, instead of seeking God's face, we seek other people. And other people lead us down the pathway to turn from our God, who we say we love and we care and we fear and we trust and depend on. So God wants you to know tonight, as we come to the end of our lesson tonight, we, we're going to continue this next week. But we have to recognize the spirit behind the spirit of gluttony because there's a demonic influence behind everything that leads you to a place of rebellion. There's a demonic power that's working behind the scenes to lure you like the prodigal son away from your father's house. And the prodigal son, he rose up in rebellion and selfishness and said, Father, give me my portion, my inheritance that I can live my life. We do the same thing with God today. We try to fleece God. We try, try, to, try to pimp God to get what we want from God so we can live our lives the way we want to live our lives. And then when everything falls apart, we lose everything we, we thought we had control of and we fall down into a pitfall like the prodigal son feeding the swine. Then he came to his senses because he couldn't eat what the pigs were eating, so he was hungry. He came to himself and said, you know what? I had it better at home. Let me go back home to my father's house. So in the process, he changed his thinking, had conviction in his heart, and returned home. How many of you today are willing to return to your father tonight? You know that this spirit has had a hook inside of you. It has a control of your mind and your psyche. It has a control of your eyesight to see these different things of the world and desire them so much. God says tonight, I want to strip this from you. I want you to return to the Lord, your first love. And allow him to restore you back to the right standing and right relationship with himself. And I guarantee, as we come to the place of conviction, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is going to change your thinking He's going to change your viewpoint. He's going to open your ears up to hear God's voice speaking to you. He's going to go into your heart, begin to do a cleansing, a perfecting, a washing to sanctify you and make you whole. You may be broken tonight, but God says, I'm going to make you whole. And all you got to do is acknowledge, I need the Savior in my life. I can't do this on my own. And God says, I will restore you into right standing 
in right relationship with myself to where this will have no more power or influence and control of your life. So if you are one tonight and you've been violated by this spirit, God says the cycle has to end tonight. The stronghold has to be broken tonight. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen tonight spiritually. But the process is the work you must put in to get to the place where you begin to seek God's face on what you need to do to change your cycle in your life. And God says it will be done according to your faith. So if you're there at one tonight who's been violated or victim by this spirit of, of whoredom, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word to let me know where I've come up short in my relationship with you. I ask you to come into my heart to forgive me, first of all, for being rebellious and stubborn and stiff-necked, resisting and opposing you. Wash me clean. Forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, and wash me clean by the blood of the Lamb. And then I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart to restore me, to make me new, to refresh me, to revive me. And I thank you that I have been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb and brought back into right standing and right relationship with you, and that you are my Lord and you're my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. And then if you're there and don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. Heavenly Father, your word says if I confess my sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I come before you, Lord, as a sinner, asking you to forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, to come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. And I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit and that with power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if you pray either one of those prayers, God is, it, the angels in heaven, first of all, is rejoicing over you because you prayed that prayer tonight. And Heavenly Father, <coughs> excuse me, the Heavenly Father is pleased that you made a decisive decision to return to your first love and give your life over to him, that he can be your Lord and your Savior from this day forward. Allow the Spirit of God to cleanse you. Allow him to come into your heart and to begin to perfect the thing that concerns you on a daily process. It's going to take a process, daily process. The more you spend time with God, the less influence and power the enemy has over you. And God promises that he will change your thinking the Bible says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God promises that he will change your thinking as you receive the Holy Spirit inside of you to give you the mind of Christ to begin to think, respond, and behave like our Lord in obedience to the Father and the Holy Spirit's leadership. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Pray something has been said or done that will inspire you, to encourage you, to help you keep standing on the promises of God's word. And know that God loves you. He cares about you. And so do I. Thank you again. And I pray you all have a wonderful, a blessed, and a safe Thanksgiving. Enjoy yourself. If you go out of town, be careful. Remember that you're supposed to come back home, quarantine yourself for 14 days. And make sure you're taking those supplements, those vitamins, those minerals to build your immune system up. Emergency is one of them you can take. Alive is a vitamin I take on a daily basis as well. It's a liquid form because the liquid absorbs better in your system. God wants you to have common sense during this holiday season. Take care of yourself. Get you some herbal teas, elderberry, echinacea, 
all these different things, ginger, green tea, things that will help build your immune system up to fight off these diseases and sicknesses that the enemy wants to attack, attack you with. I believe that by faith, when God gives you the wisdom to do things to build your system up, it's going to work. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and it's safe. So God promises to keep you safe and secure as you do what you're supposed to do to walk in wisdom and in truth and in righteousness on a daily basis. And I guarantee you live a more fruitful and more healthy, a more abundant, a more prosperous life. Until next week, God bless you. Shalom. Peace be unto you. And again, thank you all for tuning in to this lesson tonight. Share it with your friends and family, whoever God touched in your heart to share it with. Share this word because many people in the body of Christ need to hear this word. And I guarantee their lives will be changed because God's word is a life changer. Have a good night.